In September of 2000, I sold my car and got on a plane to Indonesia. I was heading for the easternmost province known as Papua. There I hope to meet a people who have been isolated from the rest of the world until not so long ago. The story began in May 1960, when an exploratory expedition hacked its way through the jungle. The exploration was financed by Freeport Minerals, the parent corporation of a company which would be called Freeport Indonesia. Here in 1967, Freeport, Indonesia came to mine copper ore amid the snowy summits of the Jayawijaya range. Through the years, the snow has compacted into a glacial ice field. Ice as ancient as the ways of the Amungme people. Dr. Carolyn Cook, anthropologist and expert on the Amungme, met me at the airport and we embarked on a two-hour drive up the mountain ridge road to Tembakapura and into what used to be Amungme land. The Amungme culture has been existing in these tropical highlands for more than 30,000 years, yet neither I nor anyone else had ever heard about these people. We finally arrived in Tembakapura, Freeport's mining town, population 10,000 and growing. But no Amungme live here. This is the Wa Valley, 10 minutes downriver from the mining town. And here were the first Amungme I saw. It's midday, time to eat some sugarcane. Along this road people barter and sell vegetables the main food of the Amungme. I was excited to see the Amungme, but I have to admit that I was also disappointed. I thought that maybe I would find the Amungme closer to the few images I had seen of them before I came. Now, this man was exactly how I was hoping to find some of them. Unfortunately, Carolyn told me that nowadays the Amungme only dress traditionally for tourists and for money. These are among men just 25 years ago. And this is today. A lot had changed and much faster than I had thought. I realized then that my expectation to find their culture intact was naive. The students in this beginning math class are among the men who work at the Utikini Center, also known as the Amungme Agroforestry Project. The project is sponsored by Freeport and was created by Carolyn to teach the Amungme the cultivation and management of certain cash crops, an effort to help them become economically more independent and self-sufficient. Since the Amungme live in cool highlands, Coffee was chosen as the main crop. The men here are preparing these young coffee plants for shipment to a neighboring valley, a half hour helicopter flight from here. I was invited to come along. Very excited. Not just because it was my first helicopter ride, but especially because we would be venturing deeper into Amongma territory. The Amungme number somewhere around 6,000 people and live in small villages in 17 valleys spread over a vast area of dense and impenetrable highland rainforest. There are no roads, paths or hiking trails connecting villages or valleys. Only the Amungme know how to negotiate this terrain to get from one place to another. And there it was, the village of Jaba, 
had already looked and felt a lot more natural and less tainted. There is nothing like the feeling of venturing into a remote and mostly untouched area. This snapping along with the handshake is typically a moon, a custom I became very fond of. Hello, in a Hmong language is Amole. I thought I'd give it a try. <laughs> This is the communal house, a place where everyone gets together. The men's bows and arrows are left outside. <laughs> 